Mutiny on the Bounty by Tim Vickery Chapter 1 From England to Tahiti It was a cold day in December 1787. There was a strong wind and a green sea. Three men and a boy stood on the deck of the little ship HMS Bounty. Behind them, on the land, were some hills and small white houses. The ship moved slowly out to sea. The boy, Peter Haywood, was fourteen years old. He was a young officer, and he was happy and excited. England looks very small, Mr. Christian, he said. Fletcher Christian smiled at him. Christian was a tall young man, with black hair and a long, tired face. England is small, he said. But we're going to some much smaller islands. Tahiti, the friendly islands. They're small, but they're very warm and beautiful. A sailor, John Adams, laughed. That's right, Mr. Christian, sir, he said. Good food, warm sun, blue skies, and hot, beautiful women, too. I want... Be quiet, man, someone shouted. Christian and Haywood looked behind them. They saw the captain, William Bly. He was a small man with brown hair. Christian knew Bly well. They were friends. But Bly was a captain now, so things were different. The bounty was his first ship, and it was very important to him. Don't talk about women on my ship, Adams, he said angrily. Be quiet and sail this ship. Do you hear? Yes, sir, said Adams quietly. Now, listen to me, Mr. Christian. And you too, Mr. Haywood. Bly stood very near them, but he didn't speak quietly. All the sailors could hear him. I'm the captain of this ship. Remember that. We're going 30,000 kilometers through bad weather and very bad seas. And I don't want any accidents. You are officers, so you don't talk to sailors about women or drink or anything. You must work hard, and your sailors must work hard too. Do you understand me, Mr. Christian? Yes, sir, said Christian. But he didn't look happy. Good. And you, Mr. Hayward? Yes, sir. The boy looked at Bly, afraid. Then Bly smiled. Is this your first time at sea, boy? Yes, sir. Well, you must work hard and listen to me. One day, perhaps, you can be a captain, too. Would you like that? Yes, sir, of course, Peter Haywood smiled. Right then, Mr. Christian, look at those men there. They aren't working. Run and talk to them, quickly. Bly smiled again at Haywood. In a happy ship, the men must work hard, but the officers must work harder. 
Do you understand, boy? The bounty sailed south across the Atlantic. For ten days, they were in a storm near Cape Horn. But they could not sail west because of the strong west wind. So they sailed east to South Africa, Tasmania, and Tahiti. There were 33 sailors on the bounty and 11 officers. Bly was the captain. Christian was his second officer. The ship was often wet and cold, but no one was ill. Once Bly gave the sailors some apples, but they would not eat them because they were old and bad. Bly was very angry. Damn you men, he shouted. Apples are good for you. You eat them, I say. On the 26th of October, 1788, the bounty arrived at Tahiti. The islanders came to the ship in big canoes with food. The king of Tahiti, Otu, was friendly. Bly went to Otu's house and gave him things from the king of England. Thank you, Captain, Otto said. You are welcome here. I must give the King of England something, too. But he's a rich man. What would he like? Do you know? Bly smiled. It was an important question. My king is very rich, Otto, he said. But we don't have any breadfruit trees in England. My king would like some for his people in Jamaica. Can I take some on my ship? Otto laughed. Of course, he said. That's easy. Take lots of them. My people can help you. The bounty stayed at Tahiti for five months, and by March there were a thousand breadfruit trees on the ship. Tahitian children played on the ship, and in the evenings the sailors danced and sang with the women. One morning, some sailors and Tahitian women took a ship's boat to a different island. Bly was very angry. When the sailors came back, he put chains on their legs. Then he shouted at his officers and men, You men must stay away from these women, he said. You must all listen to me and work hard for me and the king. Some officers kept pigs on the ship. Sometimes Bly took the pigs from his officers. I'm giving this food to the sailors, he said. They need it, not you. April the 4th was the bounty's last day in Tahiti. The ship was full of food and people. Otu and his family, all the sailors and their Tahitian friends. But nobody sang or danced. Everyone was quiet and sad. Peter Haywood saw John Adams with a Tahitian woman. She cried and he talked to her for the last time. Then she got into a canoe and went back to the island. Peter stood near him sadly. The sun went down in the west.
Mr. Christian, shouted Captain Bly, are all the Tahitians off the ship? Yes, sir, Christian answered. Good. Then we sail for Jamaica, and then back to old England. He looked at Peter. Don't stand there, boy. Get to work. Look at all our beautiful breadfruit trees. King George is going to be very happy about them. Chapter 2 Mutiny On the evening of the 26th of April, Adams saw Bly on deck. He looked angry and stopped near Fletcher Christian. Mr. Christian, Bly said, where are my coconuts? I had fifty yesterday, and there are only twenty here now. Where are they? Do you know? No, sir, Christian said. I don't know. I never saw them. I didn't take them. You know that. Captain Bly looked at his tall young officer and said nothing. Bly and Christian were once friends, Adams remembered, but not now. Bly was often angry. Christian was always worried, afraid. Bly said, Mr. Christian, you took my coconuts. I know you did. You're my second officer, but all you officers take my things. God damn you all. At four o'clock that morning, Adams saw Christian again. It was a quiet night, and the ship moved slowly through the water. Christian had a piece of wood with him and a bag. His face was white in the moonlight. A young officer, George Stewart, talked to Christian. What are you doing, Mr. Christian? Stewart asked. I'm in hell, Christian said. Bly doesn't like me, or any of his officers. I must leave the ship. Leave? What are you talking about? How? I have some food in this bag, and wood, and I can swim, Christian said. We're not far from the island of Tafua. Perhaps I can swim there. Swim to Tafua? Of course you can't, man. Do you want to die? It doesn't matter. I can't stay here with that man. I'm in hell, I tell you. Every day he shouts at me, and it takes a year to sail to England. I must leave the ship. I understand, Stuart said. Many of us are afraid of Bly. We don't like him. But you must stay. You're our best officer. Listen to me now. Bly was in bed when the door opened. Christian came in with three sailors. It was still dark. Bly opened his eyes. In the moonlight, he saw the gun in Christian's hand. What? Bly sat up. Get out, damn you! This is my... Hold him, Christian said. The sailors put Bly's arms behind his back, and Christian tied them with a rope. Now, sir, come with us. They took Bly out of his bed and up onto the deck. He wore a shirt, but no trousers or shoes. 
There were ten or twelve men there with guns and small swords. Christian held Bly's hands with the rope, and Adams stood behind Bly with a gun. What are you doing? Bly said angrily. Let me go at once. You're... Be quiet, Adams said. Listen to Mr. Christian. But I'm the captain. Not now. This is our ship now, Christian said. Adams, put the launch in the water. The launch was a small boat, seven meters long. Adams put it in the water next to the ship. Right, Christian said. Thank you, Adams. You stay with me. Christian looked at some other sailors. He didn't like them. You men, he said, get into that boat. Quickly now. No, Bly shouted. All of you, stay on this ship. Help me, now. He began to run, but Christian held the rope, and Adams held a knife to his neck. Do that again, Captain Bly, and you're a dead man, he said quietly. At the front of the ship, Peter Haywood came up on deck. What's happening? he asked. He was afraid. Be quiet, Peter, Christian said. You stay there. Get into the launch, you men, he shouted. I told you. Slowly, eighteen sailors got into the launch. Then Christian took Bly to the side of the ship. Now you, Captain, he said. Over the side. Two men carried Bly over the side of the ship. Then the sailors threw some bread into the launch with a barrel of water, a little meat, bottles of rum and wine, some rope and sails, and some of the captain's books. You see, we aren't going to kill you, Christian said. You can live on that for a week or two. But why are you doing this, Christian? Bly shouted angrily. I'm your captain and your friend. No, you're not. Not now, Christian said. Don't you understand? I'm in hell with you here on this ship. You're going to be in hell all your life now, Christian, because of this, Bly said. Bly sat in the launch with eighteen men. Christian and the sailors watched him from the back of the ship. Then they opened a bottle of rum and laughed. England is that way, Captain Bly, one of the sailors said. Thirty thousand kilometers to the north. Forget England, my friend, Adam said. I'm thinking about Tahiti and those beautiful women. We're going to be happy now on Tahiti with Mr. Christian. Christian looked at Adams for a minute, but he didn't smile. His face, in the early morning sun, was white and cold. Then he looked at the launch, far away across the sea, with nineteen men in it. Tahiti, England, or the bounty. It doesn't matter, John, he said. I'm going to live and die in hell. Chapter 3 In the Launch The launch was seven meters long, and there were nineteen men in it. 
Captain Bly sat at the back of the launch and looked at his men. The sides of the launch were only thirty centimetres above the sea. Mr. Hall, look at our food, please, Bly said. Yes, sir. Bly looked away over the sea. The bounty was very far away now, but there was a small island, Tafua, about twenty kilometers to the west. After some minutes, Mr. Hall, a young officer, said, Sir, we have one hundred and fifty kilos of bread, two kilos of meat, six bottles of rum, and one hundred and twenty-six litres of water, sir. Is that all? Bly asked. We have a small sail and some coats, sir, Hall said. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Hall, Bly said. It's not much, but we're going to Tafua, so perhaps we can find some more food and water there. Bly was afraid, but he didn't want them to see that. The men were quiet. They didn't look angry. Next day, they landed at Tafua. They found breadfruit, bananas, and coconuts, but no water. A lot of islanders came down to the sea. Where is your ship? they asked. It sank, Bly said. All our friends are dead. We need food and water. The islanders laughed. It was not a friendly laugh. They talked quietly. More men came. Soon there were nearly a hundred. They began to pick up stones. Get back into the boat, Bly said. Quickly, now! But the islanders killed one man with stones. When the launch went out to sea, the islanders came after it in their canoes. They threw stones at the sailors. Throw the coats into the sea, Bly said. Quick! The islanders stopped and picked the coats out of the sea. Then the canoes went back to Tafua. We can't land on any islands then, Bly said. Not without a big ship and guns. He looked at his men. They were quiet and afraid. We must be very careful with our food he said. Every man can have a small piece of bread and coconut today, and a cup of water. That's all. When it's cold, we can have some rum. But don't worry. Remember, I'm your captain. Listen to me, and we can stay alive. Yes, sir. Then the youngest, a boy called Robert Tinkler said, I want to go home. Bly looked at him, and for a minute the boy was afraid, because Bly was often angry. Then he saw a small, cold smile on Bly's face. To England, Robert? Yes, sir. Well... That's about 30,000 kilometers away. So first, let's find Timor. That's much nearer. There are Dutch ships there. They can take us home. Yes, sir. The boy looked happier. How far is it to Timor, sir? For a minute, Bly didn't answer. He looked away over the cold green sea. The wind was stronger now, 
and the sky was dark. Oh, not far, he said slowly. Only about seven thousand kilometers. Next morning, the wind got stronger and stronger, and the launch went up and down over big green waves. Everyone was wet, and white water came into the launch. The sailors used the empty coconuts to throw the water back into the sea. At midday, they ate five small coconuts and drank some rum. And they ate some wet breadfruit in the evening. The wind and waves were strong all night, so no one could sleep. Next day, the bread was wet, but they didn't throw it away. In the afternoon, it rained, and they caught the water in cups and coconuts. But it rained all night. So everyone was cold and wet. The launch was small, so they could not all sleep. Most men sat up all night. On the eighth of May, it was sunny. The men took off their wet shirts and trousers. Bly gave them some rum, coconut milk. And eighty grams of bread. Often he talked about New Guinea, Australia, and Timor. There were storms for the next two weeks. Sometimes they saw the sun for an hour, but every day it rained. Big green waves threw white water into the launch. They were always wet, tired, and hungry. Three times they saw islands, but they didn't go near them. They ate bad bread and old meat, but they had lots of rainwater to drink. When they were very wet, Bly gave his men some rum. No one could sleep for more than one or two hours. But every hour, Bly held a long rope over the side. The rope had knots in it. The men watched carefully. The knots went behind the launch, and Bly looked at his watch. We're going quickly today, Bly told them, and wrote in a little book. We're going about one hundred and sixty kilometers every day, he told his men. But we can't always sail west because of the wind. So I'm sorry, but today we can only have forty grams of bread. Bad bread too, said one man, Purcell. Yes. But it keeps us alive," Bly answered angrily. Then he laughed. "Look, up there," he said. There was a bird on the front of the launch. Its small yellow eye looked at them. Carefully, two sailors opened their hands very slowly. The bird didn't move. One man. Put his hand on it. The bird moved away, but at the same time, his friend caught the bird's feet and killed it. The sailors laughed and shouted. It was only a very small black and white bird, but it was food, good food. I caught it, the first sailor said. No, you. Didn't the other man said, "I did." Be quiet," Bly said. "Give it to me." He cut the bird with his knife, and caught its red blood in a cup. 
The men drank the blood. Then Bly cut the bird into eighteen pieces and put them in front of him. Right, he said. Friar, sit here with your back to the bird. Now, I have one piece of the bird in my hand. He held up a piece of its leg. Tell me, friar, who shall have this? Ledwood, friar said. All right. Bly gave the piece to Ledwood and picked up a second piece. And who shall have this? Hall. All right. No one was angry because friar couldn't see the pieces. Everyone watched. Bly picked up the bird's head and feet. Who shall have this? he asked. Bly, Friar answered. Everyone laughed, and Bly looked at the head and feet sadly. Oh, well, he said. I know it's good for me. Slowly, he began to eat them. That evening, they caught a bigger bird and ate that too. Next day, they caught one more. Everyone was happy. Why are all these birds here? The boy Robert asked. Bly smiled. Because we are near land, he said. On the 28th of May, at midnight, they saw white water in front of them. The Barrier Reef, Bly said, a line of rocks under water. We must be careful. Ships often sink here. Take down the sail and move slowly. We must find a way through. They sailed slowly near the white, angry water. Then, after four hours, they found a way through. Behind the barrier reef, the sea was blue and quiet. They sailed quietly to a small island. They could sleep on the island and walk about. They began to look stronger, but they were 2,000 kilometers from Timor, so they could not stay long. After six days, they went to sea again, west towards Timor. The sun was very hot, and two men were ill. Bly gave them some rum and the blood of birds. But they can't live much longer in a little boat like this, he thought. We're all tired and hungry. Someone is going to die soon. But it was not far now. Every hour, Bly held the rope over the side and wrote in his little book. He watched the sun and the sea and the sky. And then, on the 11th of June, Bly said, You cannot see it, but south of us there's a big island called Timor. They laughed and smiled and sang. Next day they saw the island, green trees and hills. Two days later, they came to a town called Kaupang. There were some Dutch sailors by the sea. Bly and his men walked up to them. Who are you? a Dutch officer asked. You look hungry and ill. Where are you from? I'm Captain William Bly of the English ship HMS Bounty. These men are English sailors. We left Tafua 
41 days ago. Tafur, the Dutch officer asked. Where is that? It is a small island, about 7,000 kilometers away. We came in that small launch. My God, 41 days in that. The Dutchman looked at the launch, and for a minute he said nothing. Then he asked, Did many of you die? Bly smiled. Oh, no. Only one. And the islanders on Tafua killed him. Seventeen men left Tafua with me, and seventeen men are here now. Alive. <laughs>